Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to my Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best I know how. Whew. So, out of Kevin J. Anderson's trilogy comes the next book I get to talk about. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to my review on this one. It is a lot of fans' absolute favorite novel from the Expanded Universe. That's no exaggeration. There's a lot of people who put this number one or definitely in their top five. And it is Michael Stackpole's I, Jedi. Now, Michael Stackpole had already written the X-Wing books. Everyone was a big fan of Corrin Horn, so when they saw that Corrin Horn was getting his own novel, he's holding a lightsaber, they're on the cover, and there on the cover is his R2 unit, and then there's also a X-Wing with only three guns. It's missing its fourth gun. Why is that? That always bothered me. No one ever talks about that, but there it is, right on the cover, three gun turns. Where's that fourth one? They forgot to paint it in. What is going on? I don't know. I think I'm the only person who recognized that. But it always bothered me. I was like, what? Oh, so there's an X-Wing that has a damaged turret. No, it is an, an artist who forgot to paint it on there. What? But anyway, this story revolves around Corn Horn. Mirax, his wife, is missing. He doesn't know what happened. He goes to Luke's Academy during the Jedi Academy trilogy. That's, I put this one afterwards because even though it happens at the beginning, you know, during the Jedi Academy trilogy, the adventure moves from there into Corn Horn's own adventure that takes place after the. Uh, uh, Jedi Academy trilogy ended. So the first half or the first portion of it is his experiences through Kevin J. Anderson's adventure and then Corn Horn uh, basically moves on to his own story to kind of rescue Mirax. Uh, Luke will eventually help him out and that that's basically the story. Now uh, this one also has some first person in there, which a lot of people have been saying, Matt, you said you hate first person. Does that mean you hate I Jedi? And the answer you have been waiting for is, I think I Jedi is number one as well. Now, did I surprise you there? Yes, it is the number one worst Star Wars book in the expanded universe. Ha ha ha! Oh man, I'm gonna tick some people off today. <laughs> uh, some of you had a feeling that I wouldn't like it, and you are correct. I despise this novel. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold your hate for just one moment here. Let me explain why. Is it because it's written in first person? No. Surprisingly not. Did I have a problem with first person? I did. Now, that was the first time I'd ever read a Star Wars novel that had first person in it. And I had read classics like Frankenstein, Dracula, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, who are all, is all first person perspective. I don't have a problem with a lot of the classics being first person, but I think that's an antiquated way to write. That's me personally. There's a billion people who argue, who, who say, no, Matt, that's untrue. Okay, that's fine. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's antiquated. I don't think we should be writing like that anymore. I, I don't think it's that exciting to write that way anyway. I call it Dear Diary Moments. I don't mind it for classics. I kind of like those. I love all of those classics. I've read those books more than once before, and I still enjoy them. However, I don't want anything else being first person. That's just me. Now, because I had it in there, yes, that is a strike against it, but that is not its main strike. That's not the main problem I have with this book. It's those three turrets on that X-Wing and with the missing fourth one, that bo I'm kidding, that doesn't bother me either. What bothers me the most about this is the unmitigated gall that Stackpole had to shoehorn one of his characters into Kevin J. Anderson's already written and completed Jedi Academy trilogy. I thought it was just so arrogant to shoehorn your character into a story that never, never mentions Corrin Horn. But wait, 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 wait. Stop your hate. We know why, right? Here's the thing. First off, Corrin Horn is established as a Jedi. Later on, he has the Force, I guess. And that Luke knows Corrin has the Force. So the big question is, well, why wasn't Corrin? And remember, the X-Wing uh, uh, books were written uh, after the Jedi Academy trilogy. So everyone was asking, well, why wasn't Corrin invited by Luke to come to the Academy then? That was a big question. Like, if Luke met him, knows he's in the Force, then why is he at the Jedi Academy? Well, I think Stackpole should have thought about that. I didn't like that Cornhorn had the Force. In fact, I liked Cornhorn better before we knew he had the Force. And then you got to explain something. I, I think they should have just waited till later till he was Force sensitive. Maybe his, his lucky instinct turns out to be the Force or something. 
but you know then you have that problem so Michael Stackpole wrote this book to kind of fix that problem said no he was there the whole time you just didn't read about him and that seems kind of hokey right she's like wait 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 they wouldn't know that Corn Horn was there the whole time. Ah, we came up with a way to fix that too, because Corn Horn goes under a pseudonym, pseudonym uh, that's uh, kind of like his grandfather's name, and so it's not Corn Horn; it's someone else. And that way, no one realizes that Corn Horn was there the entire time. Now, to be honest, if that's all it was that he was under a different name and you know kind of just kind of coasted through the storyline a little bit, wasn't that involved? I'd be okay with that, but no. That is not the case. Corrin is in everything. He's the center of everything. He's the one that figures out this. He's the one that figures out this. He's the one that helped the Jedi students figure out how to defeat Exar Kun. He is the one that was able, brilliant to come up with it. Now people say, Matt, he was in Corsac. He was a detective. He would know this stuff. Yes, if it was logic and firm evidence, not the force. The force is mystical and magical. And he doesn't have a big grasp on that. Why would his logic and deduction be able to solve things that the Jedi can't or the other students can't? Why is he the top student ever? Oh, by the way, Exar Kun does try to tempt him. Now, all of these new Force students, any of them would have succumbed to the dark side, possibly, with the exception of maybe Streen, maybe, because he doesn't want greatness, but all of them probably would have been succumbed by the dark side, except for Luke, he's more experienced. But not Corn Horn. Corn Horn goes, Get yourself back, XR Coon. You cannot tip me. He doesn't say that, but that's essentially it. It's like, ah, get get behind me, Satan. You know, because Corn Horn is more righteous and more knowing and all knowing and all powerful, and he can resist the temptations of XR Coon, of course. His wife is missing. He is desperate for answers. In fact, later on, he is so desperate, he decides to leave the academy later on. He just he can't believe that he's got to go help her. He's and, he, and, he, and he's always hot headed. Why wouldn't he fall for those temptations by Exar Kun? It makes no sense. Oh, because Cornhorn has got to be a perfect character and Stackpole wants him to be. But I'm not done yet because as the story for Jedi Academy ends, uh, Stackpole is basically making a statement. He's saying, I don't respect Kevin J. Anderson. Now, I've talked to Stackpole about this. And he said, and Kevin J. Anderson has said too, that he said, I asked Kevin if I could do it, if I could put my insert my character in there, and he said that was okay. Kevin says, no, it was totally fine. I, yeah, he said, I even wrote other Jedi are there too. I just didn't name them, so if anyone wanted to include a Jedi later on, they could. They could say that's one of the other Jedi. Yes, you did. Kevin J. Anderson did. It is true. He does mention there are other Jedi there, but he didn't say who they are. So just in case someone wants to plug in a Jedi. Okay, that's fine, but don't make them a central, central part of the story, which is what Stackpole did. Stackpole made it look like if, if Corn Horn had not been there, the Jedi Academy trilogy would have been disastrous. Exar Kun would have won. You know, don't make him the center of the story. You stole the limelight from every character in that series. And I think that was so disrespectful. And I think at first he knew what he was doing. Now, now I think they're all friends. But I think at first, I think he and Zahn did not, and I know Zahn didn't, but they did not appreciate Kevin J. Anderson. Stackpole may have at first, but I can't verify that. Anyway, Stackpole said that he was very respectful to the story, where I disagree. I think making Corrin Horn an integral part of all the story from Jedi Academy, he could have just made him an innocent bystander, or maybe he just didn't know, and he was like kind of catching up. He's distracted with Mirax being gone. There's a million other possibilities you could have said that would have taken him out of the main storyline, but no, Stackpole wanted to force him into the main storyline. In fact, once he, he even makes a statement in the book, Corrin Horn is upset that Kip Durin gets off scot-free. Now, of course, he's an old Corsac man. He plays it by the law, by the book. I get that. But Stackpole is echoing a lot of fans' sentiment about uh, Kip Duran. They thought he got off easy. So that's exactly what that is trying to portray there, that Cornhorn is speaking for some of these fans. And so when Luke goes, no, he made a mistake. He belongs here. Uh, Cornhorn's like, I'm done with you, Luke. I am done. And Luke goes, no. Now hold on. Cool down. Stay there. And so Cornhorn whoops out a lightsaber, and he beats Luke at a lightsaber match. Nope, not kidding. That happened. He beats him. Luke is defeated, and Corn gets his way and goes into his X-wing, flies off. Don't worry, Luke will help later on because Luke's a coward compared to Corn Horn. Now, that's not exactly how it's portrayed in the novel, but that's how I saw it. You don't beat Luke at a lightsaber battle. I don't care what Corn Horn fans say; you just don't do it. 
All right. That does not. Oh, well, Luke wasn't putting up much of a fight. He, he was like, okay, okay, go on. No, I don't believe any of that. I believe that Stackpole wanted his character to be super good at everything right off the bat and then move on and save Mirax. Now, it kind of, it does kind of mirror Empire Strikes Back where Luke doesn't want to study anymore with Yoda. He's got to leave. Okay, but there wasn't a scene where he overpowers Yoda at the end to get his way. That's the big difference there. I know a lot of Corn Horn fans say that. But anyway, so that, those are the big problems that I had with it. That he shoehorned a character, made him the central part of the story, made it sound like if Corn Horn hadn't been there, all that stuff you heard in Jedi Academy wouldn't have happened. Now, to be honest, the whole thing about now, uh, to be honest, Kevin J. Anderson and Stackpole say it's all cool. It's all cool. You know, he made these faceless Jedi for people like Corn Horn to enter in there. But I just don't buy it. I just don't like it. I did do some study though and kind of put together, deduce who some of those uh, Jedi were that were nameless and faceless. Uh, one had to be Kyle Katarn, of course, because we know that he met Kyle Katarn earlier in the series. He, we know that he also knows that Kyle has the Force. I think it was an extreme missed opportunity not to put Kyle Katarn and make him a character. For some reason, everyone wanted to avert putting Kyle Katarn in the novels. I don't know why. Maybe just because he's a video game character and they weren't sure if the video games were part of the canon at that time. Again, I just don't understand, but Kyle Katarn would have been awesome to have uh, as a main character or side story in the Jedi Academy trilogy. Now, also, there are uh, there's someone else uh, from the Dark Forces uh, games that was one of the original students we found out, Dasan, right, who is one of the... Um, uh, underlings of uh, Jarek that Kyle Katarn has to defeat. Now, he mentions it because Kyle Katarn mentions that they were at the Academy together. Uh, Dasan, if you look it up, I kind of had to look this up, but uh, he, was a, he was part of that first group and he killed another Jedi. You know, he fell to the dark side, killed another Jedi and fled the temple. And that Jedi was Havit Storm. Now, it was very interesting. I didn't know about this little connection they made off you know, over in the encyclopedias or online. I can't remember where the connection was made, but uh, Havit Storm is in an old RPG role-playing book called Jedi Dawn, and he has he's a character that has Force abilities. It's so random that they connected Havit Storm in this and said, yeah, he was at the Academy too, but he got cut down. You're like, oh, there goes my RPG character. <laughs> I thought that was really cool that they kind of put a connection in there. Uh, other characters that are, well, that could have been a part of that, obviously Camps of Salyer is mentioned, I know by at the time I Jedi, um, I know he was mentioned. There's one where they're all in the rain. I can't remember if this is the Kevin J. Anderson Jedi Academy trilogy or I Jedi, but one where they're all getting inducted or Luke's giving a speech in front of the temple and it's raining and Kem Sasalyer's there. And it was nice to see that he was one of the Jedi, even though he doesn't play a big role in that. And I'm fine with that because Kem is kind of a silent guy. He, he wouldn't really speak that much or be part of the team. He's more uh, who sits back and analyzes and you know kind of contemplates on how things are going. But another one that we found out was uh, from the uh, official Star Wars chronology was uh, a character in uh, Anx Jedi. They, they're, they're a different type of species there. And it's, his name is uh, Mandurin. Mandurin. And Leland Chi confirmed, yes, that was one of the original students there as well. Uh, nice, nice that you shoo put him in there, but uh, that's a unique alien species. I really, really wish we would have read about him instead of him just be thrown in there, but he was kind of thrown in there kind of haphazardly. We also know that uh, another Jedi that we're going to find out from Kevin J. Anderson, uh, Nikos Marr, was also one of their original students there. That is uh, revealed later on in another novel that I'll get to later. Uh, but Nikos Marr, uh, we also know there's a few dropouts as well from that academy because later on Kevin J. Anderson would reveal that Brachus who is a villain of the Young Jedi Knights, was also one of those students who just didn't work out and went to the dark side. Shockingly enough, Wizards of the Coast also mentioned another uh, dark side dropout, uh, or just dropout, Dahl Kanar, uh, who I'd never heard of before, because I, I guess I missed that when I read Wizards of the Coast, but I found out that he was one as well. So there were some other faceless, no name, or you know, students within the EU that we find out later. I don't mind them being fleshed out. And people point to that a lot when they say, well, why couldn't Corn Horn, under the pseudonym, be one of the students? I'm fine with that, but what I do not like is how he was so you know, integral to the uh, uh, Jedi Academy trilogy that if Corn Horn isn't there, then everything blows up and everything dies, because even Luke Skywalker is nothing without Corn Horn. That's how it felt to me. So it's not just first person, it's all that stuff. I thought that was very 
disrespectful, even though both authors say, no, 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 it's fine. I just don't believe that was the intentions of Michael Stackpole at the beginning. I, did, I just don't. But anyway, should you read this book? Absolutely, yes, you should. Oh, you're shocked. Matt, you say you hate this book. I do. I do. My number one. I can't stand it. But here's the reason you should read it, because I am in the way, 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 way minority of fans who do not like this book. So you should read it. Everyone loves it. You can love it, too. That's fine. I, Jedi. I just happen to disagree respectfully. All right, folks. That's all the time I have for now. See you next time with another video.